Hi guys and girls, John here. In this video we're looking at um, simplifying algebraic fractions, these questions 6, 7 and 8, and then question 9 introduces solving uh, these equations with pronumerals like the x's. We also look at that in the next video, question 10 onwards, but this is introducing it in question 9. So four questions, feel free to skip to the question you're interested in, which is indicated in red. Question six, we're now looking at simplifying some fractions with some letters in there. So they're looking pretty scary, but they're, they're not too bad. Now the key for these questions is to use our factorizing skills from question five and factorize the top line or the numerator. So you've got numerator on the top, denominator on the bottom. So we're gonna factorize the numerator and then we're gonna divide. So let's look at this first one. We're going to factorise 4x plus 8. Now, I'm not going to go through all the steps because have a look at question 5 if you're confused. So I'm going to write 4x plus 8 as 4x plus 2. And that's all divided by 4. So I've factorised the top line. Now I can divide. If I have 4 and then brackets x plus 2 over 4, well, just as a aside, let's say I had 4 a over 4. This is pretty similar, but I'm just going to do use, use another example. When I have 4a divided by 4, you know that I can just divide the numbers and leave with a. So although over here this looks pretty scary, this whole bracket is by itself. It's inside the bracket. So I can do the same thing over here and just divide the numbers. So that will, be, that will leave with just x plus 2, and you don't really have to have the brackets there because nothing's timesing or dividing by it. So my final answer will just be x plus 2. So look at the second one now. I'm going to factorise the top line. So x is common to both. Uh, that'll be x plus 2 over x, just the same uh, bottom line. I've just All I've done here is factorise the top line. Now, similar to before, you've got an x out the front and an x on the bottom, so I can just divide these x's. And, well, what do you know, you actually end up with the same answer. And that's how you do these questions. Question seven, simplifying again. I'm not gonna lie, these questions are getting a little bit harder now. Nothing that we can't do, though. So we're gonna be simplifying when, now. So we're gonna be timesing uh, fractions. So the key for fractions, when you're timesing them, is you just times the top and times the bottom. You probably already know that, so let's go ahead and then, and then we're gonna to have to do this and then we're gonna to have to go and simplify like we've done in the last few questions of this video. So let's go and do that. I'm gonna go three. Now I'm gonna leave this x minus one in a bracket. So I've times the top and divided by uh, x times six is six x. Okay, now we're gonna go and simplify this now. We've got three, I'm gonna look at these numbers first. Three divided by six is the same as, or when you, when you, three divided by six goes to one over two. We're dividing top and bottom by three. So one x minus one divided by two x. And that's actually our final answer there, but I probably wouldn't write that one. Because you don't actually need to write the one. So our final answer will just be x minus one over 2x. Second one now, let's times the top. I'm going to put this m and times it by 2m plus 4. It's always good to keep things in brackets if you can. You'll probably see why in a second. And now m times all of this, m plus 2. Now, you've got m divided by m, so we can straight away cancel those. There's step one, but it's not quite finished yet. So we've got, I'm going to rewrite this as 2m plus 4 over m plus 2. Now, it's not quite finished yet. Let's go and factorise this top line. I'm going to bring this down here. That will be, well, 2 is common to both. m plus 1 divided by, sorry, sorry, 2m, sorry. When I do 2m plus 2, and this, the bottom, will still be m plus 2. And 
How good is this? You then go n plus 2 cancels with this n plus 2 and you're just left with 2. Excellent. So take that in. I'm about to rub it out in a second do question 3. I'll just write the answer there just so we know. Let's look at this last one now. We're now dividing the fractions. Now the key for when you divide is to change it into a time sign by uh, flipping the fraction and changing it to a time sign. So now it's in a form that we know. I'm going to run out of room here, so uh, let's, let's move the whole board along. Um, okay, there we go. So let's go and so let's go and times the top now. I'm going to leave x plus 4 in a bracket. So you've got 6x plus 4 all over, let's leave the x plus 4 in a bracket. And similar to the second question, you've got a bracket of x plus 4, and then you've got also on the bottom a bracket of x plus 4. Now I flew through that pretty quickly, but I'll just explain it. When you have a bracket on top, which is the same as the bracket on bottom, well, all you have to do there is just cancel them out. It's something divided by itself. So you're left with 6 divided by 2. Now 6 divided by 2 is 3. And that's our final answer for the third one. Question 8, simplifying again. This time we're going to be adding the two big fractions, not timesing like in question 7. So this is probably a little bit trickier. Now when we, when we add fractions, remember we need the denominator, the bottom line, to be the same. So this example here, we've got 4, we've got 5. So we can't just straight away go and add the top. We need to make the denominators the same by finding the lowest common multiple. And I'm not going to labor through this because i um, probably done it before. You probably know what I'm doing, but I'll just show you how I solve it. I'm going to start at the top here because it's going to take a bit of room, this question. So let's draw an arrow up to here. You've got x plus 3 over 4 plus x plus 2 over 5. Now I'm going to make both of these fractions over a denominator of 20. That's the lowest common multiple of 4 and 5. So what did I do to this left fraction to make it 20 on the bottom instead of 4? Well I times it by 5. Times top and bottom by 5. So now the top's going to be 5x plus 3. And this one here I had to times by 4 top and bottom. So it's going to be 4x plus 2. Now our denominators are the same, so we can go and write it over the same denominator, like this. I'll make this line a little bigger. So it's going to be 5x plus 3 plus 4x plus 2. Now it's not fully simplified yet. We need to actually do two more steps. We need to expand these brackets and then simplify the like terms. So let's go and expand this first one. It'll be 5x plus uh, 15 plus 4x plus 8. And this is still all over 20. And now we have to add the like terms. Let's do the x's first. 5x plus 4x is 9x. Uh, plus 15 plus 8 is 23, all over 20. And that is our simplified final answer. Alright, so take that in for a bit. I'm about to rub it out and have a go at question 2. So I'll let you have a look at that and see what I've done. Okay. I'm going to start at the top again so I have enough room. Alright. So this one here. We now need to make the uh, denominators the same. Okay, so what is common between, uh, sorry, what's the lowest common multiple between 8 and 12? We're going to do it over 24 for both, because 8 and 12 both go into 24. So what do I have to do to this left one to get 8 into 24? Well, I times it by 3, so I have to also times the top by 3. And I like to just put the 3 outside the bracket. I've, I've learned over time that that's probably the, the neatest and it ends up working quite well later on. And uh, this one here, I have to times by 2. 
this is going to be 2, 2x plus 4. Cool, so now I can write it all over the same denominator. So 3x minus 2 plus 2 bracket 2x plus 4. Now, two steps to go. I have to expand the brackets and then simplify. So let's expand the brackets first. 3x minus uh, 6 plus 4x plus 8. This is all over 24. And now I need to add the like term. So let's look at the x's first. You've got 3x plus 4x is 7x. And you've got minus 6 plus 8 is 2. And that's all over going to, it's going to be all over 24. And that is our simplified final answer. Question 9. Now this is a whole new thing now to the previous eight questions. So we're now looking at solving. So previously we were expanding, factorising and simplifying. And we never really had this equal sign in here. So if you don't know what that is, let's have a look at this first one. You've got four brackets x plus 3. And we've, we've learned how to maybe expand that. Um, to then go from expanding back to factorising, back into here, simplifying. We've learnt those tools in the first eight questions. But now we've got equal 16. So what this is really asking is, in order for the left-hand side, for bracket x plus 3, to equal 16, what is x? If x was... Okay, this is a not a very good method to use, but let's say I just use trial and error, like guessing, and I'm going to guess that x equals 1. Well, you'd have 4... I'm going to guess that x equals 1, so I'm going to have 1 there instead. Equals 16. And then I'm going to expand, I'll, I'll add the 1 and the 3. Uh, oh, I, I guessed it right straight away. That wasn't a very good example. It was 4 times 4 is 16. Let's say I guessed that x was 2. So you've got 4... And I'm going to add the 2 and the 3 first, so 5 equals 16, 4 by 5 is 20. So, when I guessed that x was 2, I wasn't right. So, I'm going to show you how to actually go about solving it, not just guessing it. So, that's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to find out what x is, such that the left-hand side of the equation equals the right-hand side. So, we're going to use the techniques that we use. We need to, ex we need to expand these brackets. I'll bring this up here. Um, actually, I'm not going to expand the brackets first. Let's divide the left-hand side and the right-hand side by 4. You can do that. You can do whatever you want to one side as long as you do it to the other side. So I'm just going to divide both sides by 4. So this is going to cancel with this. And 16 over 4, well, 16 divided by 4 is just 4. So we're going to be left with x plus 3 equals 4, and now I want x by itself, so I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides of the equation, because I want to get rid of this plus 3. So x plus 3 minus 3 is just x, 4 minus 3 is 1. So we have solved this now, we have found that our final answer, x equals 1. Now this is a harder one now, question 2. So you've got an x here, an x here, You've got two brackets, and we're going to try to find out what x is so that the left-hand side equals 23. Okay, I'm going to expand both brackets first. So let's go and expand this. 2x, oh sorry, 2 by 2x, and then 2 by minus 3, so it's going to be 4x minus 6. And the same here, it's going to be 12x minus 3 equals 23. And now the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to be um, adding or collecting the like terms on the left-hand side. So 4x and 12x is 16x. Minus 6 minus 3 minus 9 equals 23 still. I haven't added or subtracted anything to the left-hand side. Now I've got 6x minus 9 equals 23. Well, I'm going to add 9 to both sides to get rid of this minus 9. Got a thick pen today. Add 9 to the left. I'm going to add 9 to the right. 
So 6x minus 9 plus 9 is just 16x equals 23 plus 9 is 32. Now I want to get x by itself again, so I'm going to um, divide the left-hand side and the right-hand side by 16 to get rid of this 16 here. So 16x divided by 16 is just x. I'm just going to bring this over here for some room. So you're going to leave with x equals now 32 divided by 16 is just 2. So our final answer, x equals 2. Now you could go, I'm not going to do it for time's sake, but if you go and check to see if you're right by putting 2 in here, and here, and then maybe using your hand or a calculator to see if the left hand side equaled 23.